Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of the Talk to Tanner Morning Show, where we go over tips, tricks, ideas, and exercises to help make you the absolute best entrepreneur you can be, not only for yourself, but for the people you love and care about most. You become better for not only you, but the people you love and care about most. You got to be a little uncomfortable and take that leap of faith. You're in control of the process. I'm here with you. If we don't continue to grow, if we don't continue to move on, we will be sad and upset. This morning, we have an awesome interview with a good friend of mine, colleague, business partner, Dr. Virgilio Castillo. He has, this man's been really interesting in the variety of things that he's been able to take on in both the sports world, working with like these tennis icons to starting his own practice in the chiropractic world, now continuing to expand his business, working with people with sports rehabilitation and kind of just helping this. I, I love when he's asking for referrals for his business, you know, looking out for those dad noises when uh, you're like, oh, it's starting to feel a little creaky. Then you go to Dr. C hopefully get fixed up and feeling better right away. I wanted to bring him on here. He's a great personality, a great entrepreneur. And I think we can learn a lot about the mental aspect of sports and coaching and owning a business and how that can be applied to yourself in today's world to make you the best version of you. So without further ado, Dr. C, good morning to you. Thanks good for morning, Tanner. Thanks yeah, for having me. This is actually round two of, uh, we actually had a chance to chat, uh, man, was that two years ago, a year ago or somewhere Gosh, in between? The yeah. Time? Like I want to say about two years ago, um, when we first, when we first got together, yeah, that was, and that was a, a good conversation that we probably, that you had to cut off too soon. Cause we just had such a good time. This is uh, one of the funny things about doing doing these things and connecting with people. It's one of the nice things that kind of takes you out of the time, like worrying about what time it is, what day of the week it is, and just kind of being focused on what it is you're trying to do and create and talk about, which is uh, no wonder why so many people are trying to do it for like marketing purposes nowadays, because it's really fun. Yeah, it, it definitely is a great conversation to have. And I actually was looking forward to this. So happy to be here. Well, with um, kind of these biggest, these bigger lessons, and I wanted today to kind of focus more on like the, we have so many metaphors and so many learning lessons from sports. There's something about sports metaphors that just like tend to land for people when you're trying to give them a real life example. So I wanted to kind of get right into it today. If that's all right with you, tell us a little bit about um, your athletic days. What uh, what had you moving and grooving back in the day and kind of kind of what you were doing? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so growing up, I've always been around in athletics. Um, I was always it was back in the day when you'd be able to get out of the house, run around with a group of kids, kick the ball, play um, wiffle ball, um, baseball, softball. Uh, Chicago uh, softball was like no no mitts. It was just the soft 16 inch, <laughs> oh, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And and then going out and just playing hoops and and just being a very active kid. And then. Um, it was actually an unfortunate incident where I was riding, I, I borrowed a friend's bicycle in, in her block. And when I was turning around um, to go back to the house, somebody came up to me and robbed her bike off of me. So they, they just pretty much, hey, get off the bike. I'm going to take the bike. And so they took the bike. Yeah. So that led to um, a good disciplining. Let's just say that for my father. <laughs> But then immediately after that, went right into martial arts, right? So then now I have got into uh, Taekwondo specifically and went from, I want to say that was maybe about when I was 10, 11 years old when that happened up until about when I was 18. That's when I stopped. 
but also then we were uh, playing a lot of tennis as as a kid. My father uh, signed us up. We started playing tournaments at a very young age. So I was doing a lot of martial arts, tennis, things like that. And so that's how I got into a lot of the athleticism, the the active act, you know activities and stuff like that. And so then that just carried over to um, into high school playing tennis primarily because I stopped at around 18 with martial arts, but then continued playing tennis. Um, and tennis, as you know, is an individual sport. So yeah. a lot of the things that in, as a tennis athlete is, for one, self-discipline, uh, self-reliance, problem solving, um, you know, as well as being athletic and in and, and all those types of things. And so then that just kind of translated more into, like I said, high school and into college, played um, for a very small stint in university, um, played in uh, a smaller junior college. Um, then after that, just played some rec leagues, um, United States Tennis Association or USTA leagues throughout that. And then, yeah, then moved on to chiropractic school from there. With uh, so kind of and a long chain, it's pretty much been in your your life since like a very young age and kind of moving on it. And you touched on some of the things of like problem solving. What are uh, what are your some of your favorite things just about sports in general, like from a like a performing standpoint and being able to do them and, and interact with them? Well, one of the things that that I grown to appreciate is especially with nowadays the sports science of it all um, yeah, is sure. becoming more and more right uh, prevalent. And back in the day, now I may not look it, but I grew up in the 70s and 80s. So a lot of what, if it wasn't for martial arts, the coordination, the strength, um, you know, the, uh, the training from there would have been more challenging just playing tennis nowadays you have tennis players training what i used to do back in the day in martial arts you know with jumping and and even some weight training things like that so what i've kind of learned from it is just as far as a performance standpoint kind of like what you're you're saying is just how i've been able to learn how to use my body um and coordinate my body where some folks from my age to younger kids have a difficult time um, trying to disassociate the lower body from their upper body, such as a throw, you know, baseball pitchers, for example, especially in little leagues to maybe even some adults that really haven't learned how to coordinate their body or learn how to use their body. Yeah. Um, that has been one of the biggest things, especially as we start to get older, we have to, you know, use our body different ways. So, yeah, um, that was probably one of the big things that I've I've kind of come a, come away with. With uh, I mean, you're probably just in shock and on almost laughter seeing from when you were a kid the practices that they would do to get strong, get ready for competition, to compared to like the supplementation, the phys the the facilities, the the equipment the science behind it, it's, it's probably uh, night and day and kind of, I'd imagine for the better, right? Continue to see these, I'm seeing nine-year-olds who would probably smoke seniors in high school like a couple of decades ago, kind of at, at whatever it is, which is, <clears throat> I think, really cool. The So you're on your journey, You now you're transitioning to, um, being more so a teacher with your chiropractic practice. And also when we got, had the pleasure of working together, you were still coaching um, tennis. So, I mean, could you mind share on us a little bit how you're how you've been able to handle the transition from being the athlete into the sport to working with the athletes who are in the sport? I feel like this is a tough transition for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I, well, I, I think um, 
you really have to love what it is that you do. Luckily for me, I found um, a profession and a passion for sports related or just sports in general, right? Um, from from NASCAR that's kind of come to Chicago all the way up to like uh, cricket. You know, it's, it's a very, um, you just got to love sports. And again, with chiropractic, I've been able to, you know, marry the two from medicine, sports medicine, holistic medicine to sports and athleticism. So that's a really nice plus with, um, you know, uh, chiropractic as a general, you know, profession. Now for me, I have a passion for tennis. Um, now it wasn't always the case as I was growing up, but now I've become to appreciate and really enjoy and then still learn the game of tennis. And I think that's the biggest thing too, is that regardless of what sport or what activity it is that, that you're really passionate about is just being a student of that sport. And for me, tennis is that. So the transition wasn't that challenging for me, right? Because I always knew that I wanted to be some sort of sports um physician or sports um um i guess health professional right so with playing tennis and still staying around the game and actually still coaching it to this day um the transition hasn't been that challenging for me i think what's challenging and we'll get to that a little bit later is you know just okay where's my focus going to be today right but um, as you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to see. I'm in a baseball training facility, so I see a lot of overhead athletes, and tennis is an overhead, um, overhead, you know, reaching over type of sport. So um, that kind of puts me in a unique situation where, you know, I can see a lot of either baseball players, softball players, um, lacrosse players, uh, tennis players, as I mentioned, um, things like that. So it's been um it's been a fun ride so far. Um now you kind of touched a little bit on you know what nowadays what kids have from like that 9-year-old to the yeah, senior, crazy. right? It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, like yeah, it, it is funny because the places that you see now like this like like I mentioned I'm a, I'm in the yeah, uh, you're in a baseball not, training so, facility yeah. exactly. We didn't have that back in the day. We <laughs> had what our facility was a park. Right. You had the the gym or the um, the monkey bars, the slides, the the swings. Nowadays, you have here you got TRX trainers. You've got, <laughs> you know, um, the rings here. Um, you've got, uh, you know, back in the day, uh, a pitching, um, uh, a batting cage. You'd have to pay. now batting cages are in almost every training facility. Right. Mm -hmm. I think uh, right now at the, in my radius, there's like three baseball training facilities within a mile of, of each other. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, now, the danger that I find, though, and that's kind of like the topic, a hot topic in in the sports medicine realm is specializing too early. Mm -hmm. You know, that nine year old that just wants to play baseball, that's it. Or and this is more common, is that parent that wants their nine-year-old yeah, exactly. to play baseball only, yeah. Yeah. right? So that's the danger. And I think there's a term that's being used out there is long-term athletic development and or LTAD. And that's kind of like the realm that I grew up in. I played multiple sports, um, multiple disciplines, using my left and my right side, which became more athletic. Nowadays, you see a lot of young kids with either a Tommy John surgery at a very young age at like say 16, 17 years old, right. having an elbow surgery, that's crazy, you know, mm -hmm. um, or low back pain because, you know, they're just playing football so much. Like I had a, a actually he was a junior who had uh, low back pain. Um, but then again, he was a, he was a stud of a linebacker. So oh my uh, gosh. train wreck after train wreck. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and he played, <laughs> Uh, football, I think in peewees and, you know, so it, it does get uh, a little, uh, I, I want, I don't want to say diluted. It's not diluted. It's, it's sometimes that you just put those children in a, in a pigeonhole and 
that's all they they can do that uh i'm glad you brought that up because it kind it it really got to the core of what i would i was asking you so you transition from an athlete into a coach and i've seen it too many times unfortunately where coaches and parents can start to live through their athletes and like for getting them to push so hard to the point that they are having like Tommy John surgery and they're with it with an age of a teen, like still attached to their name. So, I mean, being careful of that, what, it, what advice would you have for parents then you think as they're trying to, they're like, man, I got this gut feeling if little Timmy plays baseball for 30 straight years, he's going to be pretty damn good versus like letting them kind of develop or kind of mix. What's your opinion on this whole thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, being a tennis coach, um, I'm surrounded by a very good number of athletic young um, children who play tennis like they're mini pros, <laughs> right? I'm sure. Um, as a matter of fact, as I say that, I'm thinking of this particular nine-year-old who's playing who actually practices with like 15 and 16 year olds, right? I mean, this kid, he could, he could really play. However, his parents are doing it right in that he plays other sports. He does martial arts. Um, he does play soccer. So he's getting a well-rounded athletic base, if you will, right? He's learning how to use his body in different, different planes of motion in different ranges of motion if you will he's learning how to use his left now he's right-handed dominant so he uses his left side too in other sports in martial arts and yeah. um, um learning to use his lower body independent of his upper body from soccer so my advice is to yeah don't um try to pigeon your whole pigeonhole your child in a particular sport if they really gravitate towards toward a sport that's usually at around the age 14, 15, right? But having, giving them the exposure of multiple sports to learn different aspects, not only of, of their body, but their brain as well. Because young children's brains are very placid. They're, they're, they're like literally sponges. And they're learning how to use their brain and coordinate their body based on those pathways that they develop as a young, you know, exposed to different, sports and stimulus right so not just video games and such so having them experience those those different um disciplines is only going to help the child not so much hurt the child now you still have a base of let's just say baseball for example um yeah they could definitely play little league they could play travel league um but at the same token you know don't discount because as we go into a little bit further uh, conversation of the question becomes, are you overstressed or under, under um, recovered, right? Mm -hmm. So on overstressed or under recovered, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later. And when you stress the system way too much, then yeah, that's when you're going to start developing issues, right? Like an elbow problem or something like that. Yeah, this um, it kind of leads me right into this uh, this point about finding the balance. I think it is starting to show that like rest is really necessary, and that you know not going completely full bore on say a certain sport or a particular workout or style. I think can help prevent with injuries when i'm talking to so i talk to a lot of people and we do a ton of goal setting and in, in, in this and that and usually the number one goal reign supreme it's something tied to health and i think it's so common to have a fear of getting injured like people just like they're like i i'm an adult now i cannot get injured i have too much going on to deal with that what are some things that you would say for people to like look out for to avoid some of the most common injuries i know i was reading some of your common injuries on your website earlier today um 
some advice you'd have for folks? Absolutely. What's so funny is that in the intro, when you said about the dad noise, how, yeah. how, how definitely prevalent that, I mean, like you hear that all the time and even moms give the dad noises too, when they stand yeah. up from a seat. So um, usually the biggest thing that I would give is, and um, for those that are familiar with the, the sports and rehab, there's a quote, especially something um, from a company called Functional Movement Systems is where they say, move, move often, period, move well, right? Move well, move often. And to me, as we get older, as because, you know, you looking really good right now, Tanner, and I'm sure you're going to get older from here yeah. and still look good, right? You want to keep moving. Um, and the best way to do that is to keep moving. <laughs> which is very cliche, but right. if you're moving properly, yeah, and not avoiding certain movements because of pain, there's that's an issue, right? So mm -hmm. just making sure that you're moving the most efficient way that your body is allowing you to do. Um, so for example, um, you know, the ankle is probably one of the biggest things that, that loses motion or um, decreases motion as we get older, right? So um, if your ankle's not moving well, then something up the chain, up your body needs to right. move more often, which then becomes the knee. And why do we have so many knee replacements, knee problems, and and creaking knees, cracking knees? Is it could be either a, a poorly moving ankle, or the the uh, upper this upstream, like the hip. The hip might be really really tight. So, um, so which brings me also to you know everybody does a lot of activities and we need to have some self-love. So getting a massage is not a bad thing, right? It's not only in a, in a spa or so, you know, just people think, Oh, I don't like people touching me. That's fine. Get a, a foam roller, right? Nowadays you can find a massage gun for like yeah. at, at, you know, a discount store. Yeah, for real, you know? So, getting that done getting some soft tissue work is is very important especially in those very active um, muscular areas like the hip or like the shoulder like the neck so that brings me to like you know um, neck issues some people go oh my neck i'm having headaches or whatever it just could be yeah. tension stress right some tightness in there so um you know getting your child to like hey Let's let's get some the some hand strength going on on this yeah. neck here. Work on that neck, so yeah. yeah, right. Not just sit on your your phone or your your video games. Here, you want to work on your thumbs and fingers. You work on this neck right here. So, I mean, getting some work done on there because that could just you know loosen up the tension and hopefully even help you with the headaches, right? Um, but then once you find or once you've relaxed and you, you got those muscles moving. And now we want to get some flexibility, right? So that's where the stretches come in. Um, and you could, it doesn't have to be very elaborate stuff. You don't have to go join a gym and go to yoga classes, although it does help a lot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just doing some basic stretches, um, starting off that, uh, I would um, just kind of make sure that every joint in your body needs to move and, if you don't know how to do that, then find somebody in your area, um, you know, to, to help guide you. And that's the thing, too, is that most people feel like they need to have somebody not like, you know, you're a coach. So people do need coaches to help them through that. Right. Especially the ones that are more knowledgeable. If, if they're not knowledgeable, then, OK, you need to go on, move somebody and find somebody else. But um, just somebody to guide you through these exercises drills whatever you want to call it uh to just help you move better and move often this uh <clears throat> i hear it all the time the move it or lose it and at, whenever so i live in me and my girlfriend we're probably it seems like we're by far the youngest people a lot of the people are a lot older and i see a dozens and dozens of them who are probably in their 60s and 70s just walking every single day and i'm like keep going and then you see some of them 
who are just stuck on the porch and they're not moving much at all. And I don't ever see them ever walking ever. And it, it, it does sound cliche, but continuing to move and then being smarter talking, you know, you, you contact Dr. C, you go over to his website that will be in the link in the description. If you got questions for him or just trying to, I mean, YouTube university, right. This, uh, the new age stuff of, it seems like we could get educated on any, pretty much any type of movement that we would desire. And, um, that has me, uh, that has me pretty excited. This, uh, the, you'd mentioned whether you do it at a gym, you get an instructor or coach, you do it at home. When it comes for you for working out, are you more, do you like working out in public places and with groups of people? Or do you like working out at home and by yourself? What's kind of your jam? It seems like um, a lot of people are back and forth on this. Yeah, absolutely. I find whatever is most comfortable for you, right? Um, I know um, women, sometimes they don't like going to the gym because it's just, you know, too many people, too many eyes. And, you know, some people get self-conscious. Men too, right? It's perfectly okay. So I just find whatever is comfortable. So I've actually worked in all different places. Um, I end up finding working out at home probably be the most convenient for me yeah. right um so some people like the gym because you know it depends on what they're how how do they get motivated right so um if they or if they're paying for a membership yeah they're gonna go okay i'm gonna go yeah. uh but if they're self-disciplined to work out at home they're gonna go right mm -hmm. um and you mentioned uh youtube university so we've got a mutual friend um i'm gonna plug her me kennedy right oh yeah um, me yeah. fitness and she she's got her, her youtube uh jam if you will there so um give a shout out to emmy and she does a great and fantastic job too so uh wherever you feel comfortable just just get there get out there um i actually have my own personal gym here at the house and then also in my office so that's another nice thing to have to to be able to work in a facility like mine is that i have all the the bells and whistles and the newest toys uh to experiment with so this uh i can't help but over the last three or four months so my girlfriend likes working out at home and i am completely sold on the fact that i get a way better workout when i'm at a gym for me there's i think she likes the like the isolation and her being able to blare her favorite kind of music in her basement we have the room for it at the house so it works out the we have we bought some of those nice mats that you can put down on the ground so you can chuck weights on them yada yada sure but the for me even though we have that stuff here now it's not even a question to me i'd much rather go to a gym there's something about, I feel like when I just get there, then I have no choice, but to like, let's get this done versus at home. I'm like, it, our lawn, our washer and our dryers are down there. It's like, oh, well, this laundry needs moved or like the dog needs to go outside or whatever, whatever it may be. I'm, I'm a bit of a squirrel and I get distracted very easily. So being at the, at the gym has always been a preference of mine, but playing with both of them, right? I guess that's what we're talking about. Like you're saying, like, you got to find, you got to figure out what you get motivated by and what you're actually willing to do. You know, like you said, we just need you moving and how you do that. And how you there, it seems like there's a thousand ways to, to skin the cat. There's uh, I mean, are there some certain uh, types of workouts and types of sports that you're recommending to people as they're getting older, things that they should try and do? Because what, what, what can we do to make it fun? Absolutely. I think, um, well, there's a, a few things, right? So if they have like uh, an athletic history, so if they've played organized sports back in the day, um, so they might, like, like you mentioned, is they might like to go to a gym, right? 
Um, so I would just go, just go to the gym, start working out there, get on the treadmill. Um, if they like weights, work on weights. However, as you get older, those weights may not necessarily be the best thing for you. It could be, you know, some resistance band work, um, things like that, because those are easier on the joints. Whereas when you're lifting heavy, um, because eventually they do, they do get he heavy now, um, the bands would probably be more um, easy on the body. Now, it depends also, too, can you kind of mention goals. What's your goal, right? So yeah. if you want to get big and bulky as you get older, which um, could be goods and bads, uh, yeah, heavy lifting, but definitely finding somebody like a trainer who knows what they're doing to kind of um, guide them again, right? Because what you used to do back in the day may not be the best exercise for you right now, if, especially if you've got some sort of joint problem, back problem, you know, things like that. I even would just be cautious to just make sure that, uh, you know, we're not having high blood pressure, hypertension, um, things like that, because that, that could be going down a, a bad path also. So just make sure that they're, they're healthy enough to, to do this stuff. So, uh, another one, too, is that if you've never had any organized sport growing up and now you want to get healthy as you get older as an adult, um, so learning your body again, kind of going back to that, because certain exercises require coordination. And what's nice about free weights is I kind of think of it as coordination training. So when they do, you know, it's e everybody knows how to do a bicep curl, right? However, if you're using and you get tired, you start to use your, your body and you start to wrench that, that curl up, then mm -hmm. we're starting to use our, the other bodies, ex, body parts except um, for isolation. So you're not isolating the bicep, you're using your, your back to kind of help you lift. You're seeing the, the weight come up, but then you're wrenching your back at the same time. Um, so I would, at that point, start thinking maybe starting off with a, maybe a Pilates class, right? Mm. So I've recommended that because coordinating their body, using their core is huge. I like Pilates um, if the instructor is well-versed because, you know, you get goods and bad coaches, doctors, coach, you know, right. trainers, things like that. Um, know how to progress you or regress you. So if they see, okay, you're struggling with this, let me pull this back a little bit, knowing when to do that. Oh, you're doing really well with this. Let's go ahead and progress you even further, right? Mm -hmm. So they know the art of training. Um, and Pilates is a nice, easy way of knowing how to use your core, how to get a neutral spine, um, using body parts that you probably have never used before. Um, and then from there, we could go into more of, you know, um, standing or you know, whatever other exercises that they want to get into. So um, really depends on what their history is, if they've got a good athletic base or if they're brand new to, you know, working out. So knowing to see, and Pilates is just a starting. It's not like the place to start, but, you know, if that's where they um, need it, then I'd say, you oh, know, that might be, or yoga. Yoga is another one too, if they're very stiff. Uh, Pilates mm -hmm. kind of does the same thing, but yoga is a nice one. Um, and then finding a sport that they like, right? Because like you mentioned with goals is you're just not going to go out there and train. Uh, if there's something that you want to do, and I know your history there that, that you like to, to rock climb, right? Um, so to me, there's a lot of, you know, benefit to yoga, right? Yeah. Because when you go for a grab, you have to be contorted in a position that your body's not used to. Right. Yoga does that without a wall and you're not a hundred feet up in the air. Right. Right. So that would be, so it depends on what sport they are. So yoga, I would recommend yoga for you. If you know, whoever's in that, that same sport or similar sport, um, you know, baseball, for example, would probably use something like, you know, arm action with foot action. So we get maybe a little bit of, uh, weight training, obviously, with that, maybe even some um, combat sport could be something like um, um, 
karate or something like that only because that it's using the left and the right side and you know you using overhead swings you're using you know swings like that so yeah it really depends um which then also kind of brings me to um those brain pathways that i was mentioning to you because like if you're using just say like again baseball if you're just used to one thing your body doesn't know the other other direction so if you're used to this just horizontal plane if you will mm. your brain needs to use that vertical plane or that that angled plane right um get used to those types of movements it only again helps you coordinate your body much much better this uh i really like the point on understanding the mechanics of the goal that you would set for yourself so if you're like my brother he he's getting really good at rock climbing and his ability to move his body in a way and he's always telling me like this you gotta stretch you gotta stretch you gotta stretch and like be able to have your body ready to be in those uncomfortable positions and vice versa so maybe that's what we're talking about here is just looking at what it is that you really want to do and looking at what this movement really entails and then finding something that can support these movements and help you progress or at least understand at a level like where do i need to regress and where do i need to progress and and a lot of this seems so complicated and up to the individual like say your hips bad my shoulders bad or whatever understanding like you are uh on your own like fitness journey and kind of tailoring to what what it is that you need and want to kind of support so well that's kind of like where i was mentioning about having a guide right so yeah. finding somebody someplace that that is more of a guide as opposed to somebody that's like okay we're gonna do this this and this and this i need to see you this this and this and this many times well if you got it you're good you know you get the general and um information and you work with it but then you're like wait you know what i found a, a stumbling block here can you help me with that that's kind of like the the guide or i guess i like to use the term um you know um yeah the coach if you will right because the coach is out there to to kind of help you through it and help you guide you through it um and, but it, it's up to the individual kind of like you were saying it's like okay i need to go take this to the next level like and, and progress through it, you know, based on the information that I'm given mm -hmm. um, and then have a retest. So I'm a big, so in my clinic, we do a test and retest, right? So we test you initially to see what your limitations are. And then as you, we, we treat you or as we go through the progression of exercises, treatments, whatever the case, and then we retest you. And if you're improving and you see the improvement and you feel the improvements, then, okay, now you just need to you know, keep doing the things that you're doing, right? Um, and I think that in, in of itself is is what a, a you know a good guide should be, right? Yeah. This uh, I'm kind of flipping the the script from other people onto I want to talk a little bit more you on some of your upcoming priorities. This. Uh, it seems so important to be able to get those initial wins, like in the first couple months of say your journey and whatever, like, I just want to see some light come in through the window or, you know, say if I've been in my back's been hurt for years, then just getting some type of, uh, of win to, to help improve getting, getting us going seems so valuable. I guess on to onto the topic of you, is there between health, wealth, and relationships, where are you trying to make uh, some of the improvements over the next year? Any any one of those three categories ring home to you? Um, I think the biggest right now is kind of like the health part of it, right? I'm getting mm -hmm. I'm getting up there in age and I do have a family history of of health issues, I should say. Mm -hmm. um my father he's he's passed on um and he was you know he passed at a very uh pretty early age of heart conditions of a heart failure right so i've got that family history behind me and 
Um, I'm still trying to stay ahead of that. And that's probably one of the biggest things, right? Um, now, I think as a chiropractor, we all think that, okay, you know, you could take care of it. You know, you know, the education, you know, the information, here's what you need to do. And here you could do it holistically, right? Um, now I'm more of a realist and there are some times when you do need medicine. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's, it's just, that's just the facts. And then, but with that information that you're given, when is a good time to start using that medication? So, um, I luckily for me, knock on wood, I'm not on any kind of heart medicine right now, but that's definitely, I could see that coming. Um, but if I can prolong it or at least do the right things, that for me is, is a good thing. Um, having checked by your medical doctor is a big thing. So I know I, I'm scheduled for one, um, but not being afraid of, of what's happening because, and I'm sure like you, um, if you know it's coming and you're aware of it and not be afraid of it, then just take it head on and, and just say, you know what, this is not going to put me down or prevent me from doing all those things. So that's kind of like where I'm at with health. Um, relationship wise, um, it's, it's been good. I mean, I'm not, no complaints on my end. I'm, I'm reconnecting with some old friends, which is fantastic, uh, who come to find out with more, you know, one-to-ones, I guess, if you will, um, how much they've grown and matured and vice versa. They learn how, you know, I've got to practice things like that. So those are great. Um, and still building new relationships. I think that's the big key too, is that, yeah. Um, not staying, um, still have your circle, but then also expanding that circle too. So that's been a, a great thing. Um, and then wealth when health and relationships kind of, you know, are, are getting up there. I think wealth is just, you know, just follows with you. Right. So, um, I'm not, I, I you know, when I first opened up practice, it was a big thing. It was like, okay, where's, where's my next meal going to come from? But for the most part, when you get your, your health and your relationships right, wealth will follow. Um, I, I don't, I feel like if, and over the years I've learned this, that when you start hunting for wealth, you're not going to find it. It's like that, you know, that Bugs Bunny, where's that rabbit? And they can't find the rabbit. And yeah. then when you least expect it, that's when it starts coming. So um, mm -hmm. I try not to, to think too much about that. But yet at the same token, um, you know, I do have a family, I have, you know, a wife and kids and a house and all that stuff. So um, still got to do what you have to do. Um, but at the same token, you know, don't let wealth rule your life. So yeah, no, beautiful said uh, this with kind of picking these apart a little bit, the um, that it takes are, are you at peace with so on the health side of things just getting older? And I've had some clients and working with them and stuff, very uncomfortable with just the thought of getting older. You know, everything is impermanent and we age and kind of how is, how, how have things been with you kind of handling that relationship with understanding that you do get older and kind of how things are kind of changing and moving for, for you? Are you at peace or what are that's some? A, that's ideas? a great question um, because for a while it, Probably <laughs> once I hit the, you know, the 30 year old mark, that's when that reality started to hit the longevity question. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and unfortunately in my life, um, I've had some people very, very close to me, um, pass on. And so that's when it really hit home. And as you see your family members get older and, and the people that you grew up with start to kind of fade or um, transition over, yeah. um, it definitely puts the reality in there. And coming to grips with that is probably one of the toughest things that you have to find for yourself, right? Because it really um, helps, helps you explore who you are really. You know, yeah. when you start to think about those types of those tough questions that you ask yourself, right? Because if you don't come to terms with it, if you don't accept it, then 
there's always going to be this this wall or this sheet right and you always have to kind of you know make up that wall you have to dress that wall you have to you know feed that wall every time and that wall is that denial aspect of you know this is who you are right um and some people you'll find some of those people yeah right? you'll you'll know those types of people yeah um but then at the same token kind of like we were talking about move well move often yeah because when you are active right and it doesn't have to be you don't have to be a marathon runner you don't right. have to be you know um you know a crossfitter 24 7 right you don't have to be all those things if you like it fantastic god bless you keep going right keep doing it the best you possibly can but for those that are you know the weekend warriors that just like to do it once twice a week fantastic but making <laughs> sure that you stay with it because you will push father time further back right yeah. um yeah. and so that's kind of like how i've been dealing with it um i know that a lot of folks that are my age now um i'm i'm right I'm, I'm pushed the 50 mark right big five oh exactly i've pushed that i've actually crossed that over twice so <laughs> <laughs> two years right so um there are a lot of folks, like I said, that I'm like regaining some old relationships that can't move very well. Yeah. Right. That 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 make that dad noise when they stand up. And I hear it after yeah. lunch. I'm like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> um and so I had I like to say that is kind of like the saving grace, you know. And you'll see videos, you've seen them social reels and things like that, uh, where you've seen like these grandmothers that are uh, uh, pushing Aryan. You're right they're doing curls they're yeah. they're doing they're on the, the balance balls and and all that kind of stuff so it is out there and it's doable and um yeah it, just keep going this uh it's so nice to hear that you're you're able you're building a healthier relationship with it and just understanding the science is here and it's understood that you really are getting more time if you put in the time to exercise and move your body whether that's walking or jogging or you know i hear one of uh my clients his goal was just he just wanted to play with his grandkids he just wanted to be able to bend over and and he he'd worked in a mill for like 30 years and it beat the crap out of him and then he had to like relearn how to like Stretching wasn't a topic of conversation in the mill, it turns out. They weren't talking about stretching. Really? Yeah, go figure, right? And just kind of keeping that open mind and it's and, and continue to build that relationship. So it's really nice to hear. I the wanted, relationships, I go ahead, please. No, no, it's okay. Um, what I want to kind of add to it, and I alluded to it, excuse me, I alluded to it a little bit earlier is over stress versus under um forget the term now, overstressed or under recovered, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, as we were talking a lot about physicality. However, there's still part of that emotional part of it too, right? And I think that's part of the stressors because stress encompasses a lot of things, whether it be physical, mental, um, and are we under recovered? So it doesn't necessarily just mean sleep right mm -hmm. doesn't mean rest necessarily but uh yes sleep is a huge part of it so if you're not sleeping well okay because you know sleep apnea is a big thing um you don't have to be overweight to have sleep apnea yeah um if you're not getting enough rest that you require yourself to because everybody's different um i know i need about eight hours of sleep or so right it doesn't look like i had eight hours of sleep as i look at myself in the camera <laughs> hopefully you'll be able to touch this up but um um and then also too relative rest is what we like to call so like we i mentioned a little bit about the marathon runner sometimes if you're a runner you might want to do something different just to rest your lower half do something a little bit more with the upper half such as like um, swimming for example right mm -hmm. that's a different form of rest relative to the running 
right? Now, as far as stress, stress could be a number of things. I mean, you've come across clients, I'm sure, that are under the gun or deadline or um, they have to do this and do that. Well, that emotional stress needs to be handled or checked, right? Because then now, how does that translate to your physical stress? So do you hold your tension in your neck? Do you hold your tension in your back? Well, also too, like what's your diet like? Because if, you know, the analogy I like to use is a computer, right? You put, if you put bad information in a computer, if you put all this information in a computer, your computer starts to move slowly, right? It doesn't run as quickly enough and you always have to clean it and you have to clean it. Well, our body is very similar to that. If you're putting in crappy food, food that's not um, nourishing, then you're going to get, you know, the output that it's going to give you. It's going to be, you're going to be sluggish or some people break out, uh, have a sensitivity to certain things. Um, they always seem to have drink coffee all the time, um, things like that. So having a balancing act, and that kind of goes with the relationships and health, having that balance, that's the challenging part as we get you know, more into like the business life of things. Um, and that's always a continuation that never is going to stop. Um, but recognizing where you're at, are you overstressed or under recovered? Yeah, this uh, listening and listening to your body. And there's this, uh, gosh, what is his name? I think it's Brian, Brian Johnson, or he was he's the billionaire who's putting all that money towards like making himself age as slowly as possible. Have you heard about this guy at all? Mm -hmm. He, uh, my sister uh, was telling me about him. Now I have to look him up. I think it's, uh, no, it's not Brian Johnson. I'm going to set a link to that dude's channel. And he's already, he's like aging slower than an 11 year old right now. He does all these scientific tests and all this stuff. It's absolutely crazy longevity, yada, yada. So the onto the other part that it, it was embedded in this question was relationships. And you mentioned that as you get older, it is like you have to be motivated to for to go get more friends to interact with more people and you're in a relationship based business so how are things um you said that's a goal of yours how are, what are some things that you want to do to try and combat that and why do you think it's so tough to make friends and relationships as we get older um that's a great question let's start with that one i think because of well obviously we're just getting over this pandemic Right. So we've been isolated for about, what, two and a half years. Yeah. Um, the only thing relationship wise that we have is the face that's on our computer screen right now. Yeah. Um, now, unfortunately, we can't be close together because I know that you're a distance away from me, which mm-hmm. then makes the technology much more convenient. Yeah. Now, if you're usually within a mile from each other, yeah, it'd probably be a good idea to go out and nowadays go out and have lunch coffee whatever the case may be um i think as far as a business um it's important to maintain relationships it doesn't mean that you have to be on a weekly visit with each other right just maintaining um i think as a business standpoint it's it's important to stay on top of mind with clients and with um people in general going out there Um, which I think that is an important thing is that because, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you know, when people don't see you, then they don't remember you or they forget about what it is that, that, um, you know, either for, in my case, I help them with, right. So, uh, that's always an important thing just to stay up. And now, and I don't know how you feel about it, but every now and then when I get a line unexpectedly. So if somebody sends me a message or nowadays when they DM me, right, it's mm-hmm. out of the blue. It's it's kind of like, wow, that's so cool. It's great to hear from you, right? Yeah. Um, so having those types of things, those little reminders, those little, you know, messages out there is always a nice thing to have. And I think is a s- social um, 
you know, uh, populate or what environment we need to have that that interaction. I think, uh, um, and then now too is is it's uh, challenging when you hear all these negativity out there, these these yeah. stories about, and then people get scared. Um, now, when people are out there more often, then you know maybe these things won't happen as much. I don't know. It's it, that's that's a different topic for another day. So. Um, yeah, but having a relationship that means something to you, I think that's a big thing. That's that's what's really important. This uh, and shout out to my sister. I always have the pleasure of talking a lot about personal development stuff with her. And she was just talking about like reconnecting with people who she hasn't and connecting with people on like some type of structured basis like you don't want to be a robot by any means like on following up with people and this and that but also just kind of understanding that life gets in the way and i have a lot of empathy for people i think everyone wears the busy badge everyone's busy in their own regard and taking initiative because the relationship I mean, it is for my benefit. You know, I want to be around more people. I want to connect with more. So, so often I hear the excuse, well, it's a two-way street. They'll contact me. And it's taking initiative. And if you do really want to have stronger relationships and you want more relationships, whether that benefits your business, I know my be business benefits greatly from having tons and tons of friends. Or maybe it's not business. You just like, you want more friends and you feel a little lonely in nature. You just want to push yourself to grow and develop with maybe somebody with a different point of view. I think intentionality can, uh, can really be a saving grace for, for building those relationships out. For sure. With, uh, so for our last segment of the show, I want to pull up your website that I was browsing around and mucking around on earlier. Let's uh, so let's go to Google so everyone kind of sees how to do this. So we have here presentation. Okay, we can just type in your name. And you'll be the first one right off the bat. So oh, look at that, Doctor <laughs> Amelia Castillo. That's good for uh, hey, that's a uh, that's rank one on your name for the. The ranking system for Google. That's great. Wow, that's a first. So we have under here, we've talked about some common conditions, some headaches, some some things that we're dealing with aches and pains. Specifically, selfishly, I wanted to ask about a couple of these services sure. and these treatments that you had on here. That I was what is uh so the kinesio taping is or maybe let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. What's uh, out of these uh, services and stuff that you see on the screen, which ones do you do like most often or which ones do you enjoy kind of performing as as a service for your clients? Oh, that's a nice one. That's a good question. Uh, if you go up a little bit. Right. Um, that first line there, chiropractic adjustments of spine extremity and functional corrective exercises or rehab. Now. <clears throat> now, as a chiropractor, um, you would think that, oh, okay, he's going to get, he's going to crack my bones, right? He's going to adjust my spine, my neck, my low back. Now, I'll be honest, um, I might not adjust you on the first or possibly second visit. Um, if anything, I've been really going into the functional corrective rehabilitation probably from the get-go. Mm. Um, now my my view on that is over time is that not everybody needs a chiropractic adjustment right off the bat right um so sometimes if i can get them to move better right um mm -hmm. then that's a really good first step now the second time i see them or so and i still notice that okay this is not moving well okay now we're going to go into that chiropractic adjustment aspect of it plus the corrective rehab. Um, so that's been a pretty big eye opener for me over the years. Um, that seems to be 
what helps a lot of patients. And actually, unfortunate, fortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, that's kind of like what's been helping me gain referrals, right? I'm not out there to adjust you on the first visit. Mm, if you need it, then I'll do it, yeah. right? If you need it. If your body tells me this is what it needs, this is what's going to happen. Um, otherwise, I'm going to show you an exercise that you can do on your own. I'm going to guide you through it and have you understand and um, be aware of the limitations that you have, because then that's what's going to help you when you're leaving my office. So we'll do uh, rehab or um, exercises first, chiropractic adjustment second. Um, now let's go down the list a little bit because you kind of touched on the kinesio taping. And I think there was a, a question with electrical muscle stim. Yeah. Um, let's do the amount, the muscle stim, because that seems to be pre probably the easiest. Now, when somebody comes and sees me and they're very hot, like they're on a zero to 10 scale, 10 is emergency room pain, zero is no pain. If they're, if they've got a pretty low pain tolerance, let's say, um, you know, they're coming to see me and the pain is at like, say a seven, eight for them, we're going to slap on some electric muscle stim. Now the electric muscle stim, there's a theory out there called the pain control theory, where when you apply electrical stimulation at different frequencies, it helps to kind of quote unquote, numb the pain, right? It helps to relax those muscles so that blood flow can happen and pain sensations are decreased using electric muscle stimulation. Yeah. Now it depends on the frequency. Um, high frequencies can help, but typically low to high frequencies are more beneficial. When people use those uh, high frequency um, machines, then it's mostly muscle contraction. You're just gonna get muscle contraction. It helps a little bit because it kind of acts as that massage sensation. Sometimes mm -hmm. people use it for muscle tone, regain muscle tone, like Bruce Lee, for example. He was a big proponent of that. Um, so that's why we use um, EMS to kind of get the pain down quickly and as naturally as possible. Now, the kinesio taping, um, that's been around probably since early 2000s. And um, if anything, that kind of helps to trick or at least work with the nervous system. Now, you'll see a lot of folks ta tape this stuff on. They'll go on YouTube. They'll see what it does and how to tape it and things like that, uh, which is hopefully that's what they're doing, finding a reputable provider there that, that shows or demonstrates the proper way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, because the kinesio tape is basically kind of um, stimulating the nervous system to either increase tone or decrease tone or to help um with swelling to reduce swelling okay. so if it's applied properly then those then the tape is helping if it's not applied properly then it might not necessarily be the tape it could be the application how that person applied it on them that's why it's not working well interesting okay this uh how much does it so when you would say if you either wanted to get some EMS work done or you wanted some kinesio taping done, is that something that you would have to come in to your office and then you'd get like a one-off? Like you would just come and you just do it and go? Or is it, would you recommend someone going, like what is the, say if I wanted to get one of these two things done, like how would I actually do that? Absolutely. Um, that's a good question. It really depends on what the case is. Mm -hmm. So for example, if somebody were to, let's make it a simple case, right? If somebody had like low back pain and it was uh, like a, a nine out of 10, right? It, it wasn't life-threatening, but it was high up there. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately the pain's not going to go away after just one visit. Yeah. Now, again, it depends on the patient, too, because like some people heal like that. Some people, they go. And they still haven't found, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it depends on, you know, uh, how quickly can we get them out of pain? So elect so if a patient like that with low back pain, for example, 
is really hot, I might need to see them probably three times that first week, right? Mm -hmm. And each time they'll get the electric muscle stim um, and they might get like two treatments or two, two taping applications because the tape is actually quite nice. It lasts about three to five days. So we might not need to tape like three times that week. But um, once that is improving, then we're going to start taking you off. So I guess the question is, um, if you're coming in for pain, we might need to use that stim frequently. If you're mostly coming in for like a tightness, mm -hmm. um, then it could be a one-off. Does that make sense? Yeah. With uh, I've never had acupuncture done. Is it uh, or cup experience? <laughs> Those yeah. two are an experience. Okay. Are they um, uh, are they pretty painful or like you can? It's it's oh it's not that bad or what's up with the let's, these are two things I want to try. Yeah, let's do the the easy one. Cupping is not painful. It's a okay. weird sensation. Both of them are weird sensations. Cupping. Um, as you can kind of see there, it's it's been around for a long time. Um, I think in the Eastern medicine, it's been um, used regularly. And it's a, it's a very good form of decongestion. You're decongesting um, a body part or uh, a system, if you will. Um, it's very good as far as like reducing muscle tension. Um, mm -hmm. Some people do get an analgesic effect, which is, you know, a pain relieving effect from it. Um, I've used cupping um, frequently with, you know, first responders, um, athletes, uh, obviously. Um, and acupuncture, that's, that's interesting, too. That's been around for, you know, generations um, with a, a lot of um, success. Acupuncture, if now there's multiple forms of it. So the one that I do is the traditional needling. So if you're having some phobia against needles, this might be a challenge for you. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which then if you kind of go up to the, the cold laser I have, um, I do use uh, a laser application for acupuncture. So there are no needles there. So that's kind of fun to do. Um, laser therapy? Correct. Yeah. So I have a laser application where I use laser light to stimulate the acupuncture point so that it's a little bit longer process because I have to, you know, find the point individually, whereas in the needling uh, traditional, then I could put multiple needles in an acupuncture um, uh, channel, if you will. So um, those are those are things that I do on actually regularly, too. Okay. Well, you have uh, over at AllianceChiropractic.net. This is Dr. C's website. Use it to, you can sign up for um, kind of learning more. If you want scheduling appointment is pretty easy and straightforward. If you want to come on here and you want to book an appointment, you want to talk to Dr. C yourself, definitely make sure to do that. He makes general care um, easy, straightforward, um, yeah. And some of these, uh, check out some of these techniques and these ideas. I think it's uh, really interesting and innovative and it's exciting that we're figuring out all these amazing ways or have known for a long, long time how incredible a lot of these, um, these systems and strategies are to help make the human body move better and get more out of it. it before we go, before we uh, head out of here today, um, we had on here, you you got some, I think it's going to be really exciting and very helpful for people. This, uh, this vlog idea you have coming up wanting to, what, what is this? Is this like trainings and, and where can people, uh, learn more about this? You're getting more into the blog scene. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to give you credit. I'll give you a little shout out too, is that, uh, during our conversations and especially with your, you know, talk to tanners and stuff like that, it's, <laughs> It's inspired me to kind of give more information out there to educate, uh, in, in a sense, guide people to. Um, so I've been trying to get a blog coming out there, just get some general information and then follow that up with a vlog. Right. So people could read a lot and they go, well, what does he mean by that? So sometimes they 
like to visually um, learn. So I'm going to be putting out the vlog. As a matter of fact, hopefully by the end of today, I'll be able to put that out there on my website too. Um, and just with some follow-up information on, on a blog that I posted there. So hopefully um, people will want to join in and stay tuned for that. Well, uh, Dr. C, it was an absolute honor having you on the show this morning. We'll have your website and a few other ways uh, people can contact you in the show notes in the description below when this video posts. Other than that, um, thanks again for coming on. You stick around. I'm going to kick you off of here. Stay in the studio. We'll chat a little bit more once the recording's done, but I got to do my outro. Thanks, Tanner. Well, everyone, I hope that was an enjoyable interview with uh, Dr. Virgilio Castillo. He's coaching in the tennis world still, being a coach, very hands-on in, in the personal care space. And just, I really liked his, the one particular note that really sunk in with me today was when we develop our health and we nurture and grow our relationships, wealth naturally tends to follow. And I'd be curious to what your definition of wealth is. Is it money? Is it quality of life? What is it to you? So if for more tips, tricks, and ideas and exercise to help make you the best entrepreneur you can be, make sure to tune in with our next episode of the Talk to Tanner, Talk to Tanner Morning Show. That's all I have for today. Hope this was of benefit. Stay healthy, stay fit, and go try something new and interesting. Have fun with it. There's lots of ideas and strategies to implement. You guys having a wonderful day in case you needed to hear it. I love you. Cheers to you, your friends, your family, and the endeavors that you take on. Until next time, peace. Ooh. Thanks for checking out our content. If you want to learn more about investing in yourselves and working with me and our company personally, we offer a six-week Total Life Mastery Boot Camp where we go over the most important topics to make sure that our life has the foundation we need to catapult us forward to take the right and proper actions to become happier and more productive guaranteed or our money back.